happy Bathurst Day, Australia, or indeed the world, wherever you're watching as we go for Paddock Pass down here live this morning on Facebook. What's going to be a big old exciting Sunday at Bathurst, Andy Jones. We're going to start with the wild cards, walk down pit lane, and we want to hear from the fans. Who's your tip? Who's going to win the Bathurst 1000 today? That's what we're asking the punters. And if you've got any questions that you want to know about your favourite team and driver as we wander yeah. by, Chad, we'll see if we can hunt it down for you. It's, lo it's what we love doing. And very happy Bathurst Day to you too, oh. mate. It is one of our favourite motorsport days of the year, if not our favourite one in this country particularly. So let's get it underway. There's some looming clouds that's been spoken about in the lead up to this event for the past six or seven days, hasn't it? You know, earlier in the week, it looked like we were going to get 20 to 40 mil of rain at some point. <laughs> and so uh, that would have been an absolute downpour, something like the two year 2000, where it absolutely bucketed down. So first one, We've got the wild card event. Great to see some GRM logos floating around once again within the uh, Supercars BP Ultimate pit lane. Yeah, a team that you uh, once had a very close relationship as well. Team Sydney, been flying uh, under the radar this week. Cool to see Jonathan Webb back here this weekend driving the local legends car with Alex Davison. I think it's got some new go fast bits for the weekend, which is pretty cool. And a very experienced man with Steve Owen driving back there with Chris Pither as well. Yeah, Chris Pither and Steve Owen's a great combination. Interesting about the go fast bits, there's always updates. Those guys have pretty much been open about being behind what Triple Eight have. Yes, they're Triple Eight cars, but they're not the current spec. So Alex Davison with a big turn of speed this weekend, and likewise Jonathan Webb. Going past Matt Stone Racing, love that sound as they fire up. We've got a couple of rookies there, and Jake Kostecki lining up with Zane Goddard. That's a brand new relationship here for their first start in the Bathurst 1000. How would a kid be feeling, a teenager or a guy in his young 20s heading into their first great race today? Well, there'll be a lot of excitement. I saw the two boys last night waiting for a table down at the Angus Steakhouse in town. So they would have fueled up last night. Nice big juicy steak, plenty of protein. And um, I'd say there'll be a little bit of nerves, a little bit of anticipation. And it's a weird situation for those guys because they have been part of that super light program during the year. They've shared the car, but at alternate events, whereas yeah. this event, they've sure. gone in and they're literally sharing it. That's uh, an interesting sight to see. Car 8 currently up on the scales. There's been a bit of news there, Andy, post the Armour All Top 10 shootout, which was unfortunate for that car. Yeah, there has been a little bit of news. Unfortunately, Nick Perkat came in two kilos underweight. So I'll just jump in here. Rich, you've just gone back on the scales, mate. Can we be cheeky enough? Have you... Uh... Have you come in overweight at the moment? Uh, fatten her up a little so she's spot on the dime. Beautiful. About two and a half kilos you've added there, mate? Uh, you'd be surprised. A little bit more. There we go. <laughs> we'll just check in. Thanks very much, Rich. We are being a little bit cheeky this morning. And, hey, that's a tough blow because in... Uh, you know, for me, when we when we talk about the weights of the car, two kilos, very, very small percentage, yeah. and uh, it's probably just the, those guys pushing the envelope on fuel levels. Yeah, going past Team 18 right now. That's such a good lap from Nick Perkat as well. He really ragged that thing, so disappointing for him. Uh, I've got my phone open watching the Facebook live stream right now, so send us through your tips. Lots of people picking SVG, lots of people picking, obviously, Cam Waters, who's going to be starting on the armor roll pole position today but still plenty of believers that Car 17 can get the job done once again as well. How do we rate the chances of Kelly Racing down here at the moment? They've been uh, putting together some pretty good speed this week. Dale would look particularly good in his co-driver sessions, and Andre Heimgarten has been fast as well. I don't think the qualifying position, particularly for Car 7, shows their true speed. No, I don't think so either. I spoke to Andre Heimgartner yesterday, and he's feeling very confident with that car. They've had a couple of just little niggling garage issues leading into uh, this week. They had an issue where um, they were doing a front rotor change, and they're unfortunate, that, um, they were doing a practice one. The car came down it, uh, on without any wheels underneath it, and it bent the front chassis rail. So then they had Oof. to change those chassis rails out. A lot of things that we, you know that just fly under the radar, so to speak, happen during sessions. We try to keep across everything, but that was an interesting one talking to him. And it took them a while to get back on top of that, reset the car, get the front of the car back to square after those chassis rails were quite badly damaged. And there's also been just talking about brakes as well. Because there's been so many brake rotor changes and we will see that mandated across the field today, there has been some air bubble issues. Everyone knows how frustrating it can be to bleed brakes sometimes. If you're a mechanic out there, you're trying to do a bit of this at home. Uh, it can be a little bubble or something in the system that you're trying to chase out. There's actually been a little bit of that happening in the paddock. Now, that's fine in a practice session. You've got 
few minutes to fix it, not in the race. And the big one yesterday was Chas Mostert. As soon as they did his, he was complaining about uh, a long pedal or a spongy pedal. And what that reference is from Chas, and we'll get up there and I'll, I'll see if I can find the calipers and show you, but when you're in the race car, it should feel like you're pushing into this, this uh, bitumen road. Right. It should be rock solid. It should give you all the feel, all the feedback. And uh, unfortunately, he didn't have that. And it's usually a little bit of air in that hydraulic system, and it just moves around and the air moves around. It gives you this spongy feeling in the foot. So they were able to fix that, but you're right, in the race, not fixable. Andy, I want to check out some pit equipment, but before we get there, Brett Campbell, put you on the spot. What's the required minimum weight for a supercar to come in uh, during the session? I think it's 1350. 1350? 1350 kilos, something like that. So well um, I think that they... was a bit on the spot. Well done. Yeah, I think they came in at 1348 or something like that. So uh, I will, I will just check that while you, uh, you well, show us your boom so, camera. Yeah, we're, uh, we're, we're, we're stuck down here at car <laughs> eight slash 14. Remember, throughout the great race, they're going to be sharing these things. This is a pit boom. One of the big changes coming in for this weekend is after sharing uh, just the two rattle guns to change four tyres, they can go back to using the four guns, which are all loaded away down here at Brad Jones Racing. This is the team that won the Pertec Pit Stop Challenge. They have been adjudged to be the best team in pit lane for season 2020. And for the first time since Adelaide, refuelling in a race. <clears throat> so there's been a lot of talk about how the team's going to go through their refuelling uh, throughout the course of the race. A minimum of seven compulsory pit stops. Are we going to see dramas with refuelling in the heat of the moment? They have had plenty of times uh, across the weekend to practice refuelling, but it's never the same as being in a race, and it's been a long time since they've had to put some juice into the car mid-race. Yeah, correct. And look, those fuel lines, if you have a look around the place, they all look like they're brand new because they, when they sit with that fuel in them, they do go stiff. They do right. tend to crack occasionally and they are a lifed component, let's call it. Um, back to your question or back to our, our, our viewer question, 1395. So 39. I was a little bit out. I yep. thought it was 1350, 1395. So to confirm that that car came in two kilos. 1393, I imagine. Yep. Two hey, kilos underweight. Let's go get Bryce forward. This guy's been doing a good job so far this weekend. Also, and that weight includes driver weight and equipment and Hans and helmet. Right. I saw them eating some pies down there. Nick should have had a couple more of those before they got out there. Good morning, Bryce. How are you feeling today, mate? Good, thanks, mate. Happy Bathurst Day. Happy Bathurst Day to you. Uh, this car's looking pretty good so far this weekend. How are you and Kurt Kostecki going? And what sort of range do you guys have in terms of setup in case we get some wet stuff today? Yeah, look, obviously um, the weather's going to be a real tough one. Um, sort of from what I'm being told, I'm not looking into the weather. I'm look, letting the gurus do that. From what I'm being told, they're sort of thinking it might dry up a little bit towards the end of the day. So they're sort of saying... Uh, We'll give you a dry car, and if it's wet, you can soften your roll bars and you can deal with it. So um, <laughs> that's kind of what we got going on. But look, um, you know, Kurt's been doing a really good job all weekend. Um, you know, he, we haven't necessarily given him the best chance to put his name up on the board in the co-driver sessions and stuff, but he's been really ticking boxes for us. And, uh, you know, I think we got a pretty quick car. You know, we didn't get in the shootout, but, you know, I think we were we well and truly belonged in there. So um, I think... You know, obviously we're both rookies here this weekend, but um, you know, I think if we have a few things go our way and we keep our nose clean, we're definitely on for, for something pretty good. You made any decisions yet as to who's going to start the car? Are you going to try and judge it so if it does rain, you're in there at that time? i got no idea. Yeah. Um, Kurt had a really good sleep last night. I woke up early this morning, <laughs> so I said to him, obviously you're not thinking about starting the race. You're too but, excited. Uh, yeah, yeah, so, but yeah, not too sure what's going on there at the moment. I'll let the gurus work that out. Well done, mate. Good answer. Uh, best of luck for today. Hope to see you there after 161 laps. Uh, we were talking about brake componentry earlier, Andy. Uh, and is this going to be a big factor coming up uh, throughout the course of the day? And this team, you mentioned, had had some issues earlier in the weekend. Well, it was yesterday, yeah. And look, it's always difficult to understand how big those issues are. And the thing that we need to take into consideration yesterday, particularly for Chaz Mostert, was he was working on going into a qualifying run, so he wanted right. absolute confidence in that brake pedal. Now, in the race, if he has any sort of an issue and you get a bit of a longer pedal going, would it be such a big deal? Yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a deal, but you might be able to put up with it. And I've just come in and I've spoken with Anthony McDonald and asked him if this is OK. So when they change their calendar, they take the one off the car that's able to be done using this dry brake fitting so that connects to the uh, brake system that's where all the fluid comes in and out to push the pistons back pushing the pad onto the disc that is the little sector where you can get a little bit of air get in and out it's very very unlikely and that is a really complicated um, dry brake system it is supposed to be able to disconnect reconnect without any air getting in but Sometimes it does happen, and in this game, it's a mechanical game, these things. That's what keeps us in a job running up and down yeah. the pit lane looking for and keeping across any incidents like that. There's so many of these tiny little stories to cover. Uh, we've got quite a bit more pit lane to cover, so let's get our jets on because there's some pretty fast cars down this end that we want to 
check through on the way through. There's the Penrite Racing Boys. Dave's having some brekkie. And, of course, a former winner of the great race. Anton got a start yesterday in the Armourall Top 10 shootout. They look pretty relaxed coming into today. They haven't do seen look the pretty... best of them yet, I feel like. And if anybody's interested, Dave had scrambled, e uh, scrambled <laughs> eggs for breakfast this morning. Great to see Al McVane back in the pit lane there for Penrite Erebus Racing. Now we get into the top end of town, let's call it. So Tickford Racing here, Chad, have been so strong all weekend, haven't they? Yep. Uh, particularly this car here, Lee Holdsworth, Michael Caruso. We go back to the garage on the other side, Boost Mobile Racing, Brock Feeney, James Courtney. Wow, how's that combination? James Courtney, he's been coming here for 15 years. Brock Feeney, first attempt at this event. And would you believe it, it's his 18th birthday today. So happy birthday to Brock Feeney, just 18 years of age. What a way to turn 18. How cool is that? Very, very cool. This car here, for me, I reckon he's a podium contender. Yep outright today regardless of conditions Michael Caruso Lee Holdsworth Lee's confidence looks really good a couple of niggling issues with the super cheap auto entry this weekend a couple of electrical dramas they need a little bit more speed out of that car um, this one here though Chad it is an absolute contender not just for a podium but for the outright race win they both um, Cam Waters and Will Davison so so strong every single session not only does that car appear to be the quickest car, it's also got possibly the quickest drivers here as well. That armor off shootout like yesterday from Cam Waters was electric. Will Davison's race pace has been on point. They are looking very good. Surely they'll start Will Davison in that car. Keep Cam handy in case the wet stuff comes. They want Cam in the end as well. Yeah, no doubt. It, it, it's the smart option, isn't it? You've got two guys that are equal ability. Will Davison, uh, you know, he was fast in the Tickford cars when he was the primary driver early in the year. An unfortunate situation had him step out. So uh, there's probably minimal difference between starting either of those two guys. That qualifying lap, to be five tenths up on the rest of the field over a shootout lap is unheard of in this game. Crazy stuff. Uh, we're at the front of Red Bull. Uh Larko did a really cool update here about the angles that the cars are jacked up on, and there's actually a bit of a question about that here. Uh, I'll see if I can scroll back up and find it. From Johnny, is the concrete in pit lane on an angle like televised yesterday? So, meaning the concrete apron. It is on a bit of an angle because we're on a, a bit of an incline. The front straight at Bathurst is surprisingly uh, hilly. And it, and it changes and it's variable everywhere because what they've tried to do is, if you can see those big gutters over there, when we get those 20 to 40 mil of downpour here, point. what they try to do is angle this so that all the water is going to flow towards the gutter. So it doesn't matter where you are in the pit lane. If I get all the way down here and get my eagle eye going and look at it, if I look up at uh, where Shell V Power is, it actually is relatively flat on the concrete bit because it's got plenty of time to fall down into the gutter, whereas at Triple Eight here, there's actually a lot of fall and a cross fall across here so yes lots of different angles going on it doesn't seem like that big a deal mm. but when they don't want the cars to go up any higher than they need to they only want a gap about this much underneath those wheels to get them off under the pit stop because every amount of time that the car has to go up is wasted time chad all right let's uh, nice answer by the way let's finish up down here at shell v power racing the reigning champions and the reigning bathurst 1000 winners walk down and get a shot of car 17 who knows could it be his last full-time drive in a supercar TBC. All we know today is that he's going to be having an absolute crack at the Bathurst 1000 with Tim Slade and it's all going to kick off at 11 o'clock. That's the start time today. Remember it's been brought forward half an hour because we don't know what's going to go on with the weather. You can watch all the action on Network 10 and Fox Sports all day long and it's just going to be so exciting. Who do you think is going to win it? I'm going to go Cam Waters, Will Davison. Thanks for putting me on the spot, but I think <laughs> these guys are going to give them a nudge, that's for sure. I really like Scott McLaughlin and Tim Slade. Uh, they're so strong here. I think it's going to be a ding-dong battle between those two cars. Happy Bathurst Day. Enjoy the great race.